the walking neighbourhood, yeah, I would position it as a good example of place-based learning and that because it's going out into the community. So typically in a school, all learning happens in the four walls of a classroom. Whereas you know, place-based learning, and this is a, a relatively new term in the last you know, 10, 20 years, uh, is, and it's, is more, much typically connected with nature, but it doesn't always have to be. You know, we live in very you know, complex spaces and our urban communities are very rich spaces as well. So recognising that a place offers rich learning opportunities because of, for one, you're physically emplacing your whole body in there and then all the sensory input. So you're switching on your whole body, all your senses, not just your head. Most schooling is just focusing on the head. And so you ignite everything. And also out there in the real world, it's all unpredictable. So, you know, classroom environment, it says very controlled and, and largely stays the same. So being out in urban spaces, in nature, there is this plethora of sensory input and then there's this plethora of wonder yeah, that then can ignite those wonderings, why is that so, and start inquiries which you know, lead to this very deep, rich learning. So um, place-based learning does ignite student motivation simply because, as I said before, you are switching on your whole body. If you will notice the unusual, you will notice the surprising, you will notice um, yeah, things out of place, you will notice and wonder and go, why is that? Why is that? Where has that come from? What was happening before? Uh, and yeah, the whole string of questions just start rolling. And the, the people in the places as well, the interactions with people. So it's the environment and the interactions of, of um, people, animals, everything. Um, because it's all, we're all, all completely un unpredictable and anything can happen at any time. And it will you know, lead you to all kinds of you know, new thinking and new connections. So working in community space, encourages deep learning beyond what I've already said in terms of you know sparking up that um, wondering and those inquiries is that you to also recognize that it is very individually um, steered so you come into that place with your own socio-cultural um, experiences knowledge and worldviews and so you interpret the space with those lenses. So each person that you're entering in that learning space with will also have those unique readings of the space. And the intersection, so when you have these conversations with your co-learners in the space, that um, immediately magnifies your learning because your reading is one reading, then that other person says another reading, then that other person's another reading. So you just, it grows and grows and multiplies. So in the Walking Neighbourhood hosted by Children project, some of the walks that the, the children went on, ah, there was you know, such a, a plethora of walks. And as I've mentioned, they chose them themselves, the destination. And it wasn't an immediate choice. It was about you know, weeks of um, going for walks in the neighbourhood and seeing what spoke to them. You know, what places did they really connect with? Um, so you know, one young girl, she led a walk to a bookshop, a very tiny bookshop that was um, probably, to give you an example of our size, probably really only the size of a bathroom. <laughs> you know, it was really extraordinary, but by being small, that also had its fascination. And she um, wrote a poem that she wrote about the neighbourhood and she did a poetry reading in the bookshop, which was, um, yeah, absolutely divine to see, and you know, is clearly a adult, you know, practice of you know the performance arts, and 
it was yeah, incredibly well received and it took people to this bookshop because this bookshop was quite hidden in a little lane way as well so it also took them to this space and what you know speaking to audience members that went along you know one that really stuck in my mind was a well-known you know, Brisbane artist so he you know dancer um, actor and he you know so he's very much aware of the arts but he's still you know he came along expecting to engage you know that there'd be kind of it, it was a children's thing so it'd be talking about children's kind of topics but what really surprised him was that there was equal concepts so you know that they could be talking about just what they were seeing in the neighborhood they could be talking about the, the books that they liked the literature that they liked the art of writing poetry and so that you know is a really was a you know a really significant outcome from these um, walks. Um, another, I do, also went along to the walks in Chiang Mai in Thailand, and so the children there were part of this project to revitalise a neighbourhood in old Chiang Mai. So there had been previous projects that architects had been working with um, artisans in the community. And this was the walking neighborhood gave an opportunity for children to be part of this revitalization work. And you know, some of the walks, the children actually worked in small groups there. So they would have a couple of destinations in a, a group walk. And what's um, coming to mind now is what it, most people would probably just walk past. But what was beautiful is that this young boy, I'd say 10, took you know, a group of 10, 15 adults to show them a vine on a wall. So it's a vine that just grows on a wall and you know, it has um, these sticky claw bits. And it's, it's very popular, you'll see it all around the world. But what intrigued him and what he wanted to share and get everyone to appreciate was its form. So, you know, the, the lines that it made, the shapes that it made, and the fascination of how it stuck to the wall. So it's bringing wonder, you know, to the everyday, to what's normally past. And, you know, that, um, the, you know, the audience members, you know, really had these awakenings going, you know, I walk around this neighbourhood all the time and I never notice. Well, I never know. 